we've actually heard from a lot of people who are just getting started with Bubble that the database is often the hardest part. Um, it can feel really abstract, especially if you don't have any database background or web application experience. Um, and, and not understanding kind of what it means to set up a data type or create relationships between things. So what I want to do is show you the equivalent of what you're doing in your editor within a traditional spreadsheet format. At the end of the day, all you're really doing is setting up tables, but it is up to you to configure every part of that table, the labels for them, how many columns essentially you're creating, and also telling Bubble what kind of values are being stored, the format of the values. So in my example here, let's imagine for a second that I'm building uh, an e-commerce application where customers will select products that they want to add to their shopping cart and then uh, indicate a quantity for each of those products. We calculate a total and we can make a payment on that final amount. All of this information to support a full checkout flow is going to be supported by multiple tables because we want to see this data and organize it in different ways depending on whether we're at the customer level, at the parent order level, or at the individual line item level, right? The product, the quantity, and the subtotal of that item. So if we look at my spreadsheet workbook here, I have things broken down into four tabs. These represent four different tables or four different data types. Okay, so the first one here is my user table or my user data type. This is equivalent to this data type here, right? So I'm in my data tab under my data type definition. These would be all of my tables in my application. Now, once I go into one data type, I can set up what would essentially be the columns for that table. So a user has a date of birth, a name, a photo. Okay, so I have this over here. I don't have the exact same fields, but the fields that you create in your editor, I have as column headers in my spreadsheet. So a user would have a first name, a last name, a type, an email address. Right, users have a creation date and a last modified date. If I go into my next table, so my products here, a product would have a name and a price. Okay, if I go back into my editor, go over to my product data type, I have name and price. This is a better example because they are actually the same between the two. And notice that when I set up the product data type, a product's name is a text, product's price is a number. So I set that up every time I create a new field. Right, I had done price like this, and I selected the field type saying, hey, this needs to be a number. We are going to want to do math with this number at some point. So Bubble needs to know that this value is something we can calculate on. Now, we get a little bit fancier when it comes time to relating records to one another or relating a record to an option set. Let's start with the option set. So here under my data kind of management area, I have a sub tab called option sets and here's where I can manage all of those different lists of choices. So for example, I have an option set here called user type. So I just created that by typing the name here, hitting create, and I've got my new user type set. I can change the name here if I want. And then I defined the list of options within this set. So users can be admins, a customer, or a guest. I can add another choice and it would add it right there to it. So if we go back to my example user uh, table here, we can see text field, text field, and then I have this in orange here to indicate that this is an option set. So this isn't something that the user is typing in, it's something that they're choosing. They're selecting from some design that I have on a form, uh, you know, on a front end page for them. Maybe it's a drop down, maybe it's a radio button. The fields that I have here in this dark gray or this black color, these are actually built-in fields. So Bubble has a number of built-in fields for every single data type. Creation date, this is a date and time stamp of when the record was first generated. This is not something you can change. And then the last modified date. So if we updated the customer's last name, for example, this would update to whatever that timestamp was. Um, unique IDs, every single Bubble record is going to get a unique ID. Um, you cannot change those. This is very helpful for having a completely unique across all tables, um, some identifier. Now it's not sequential like this. I did, I did this, uh, you know, in this format just for simplicity, but unique IDs are actually more random and they're a longer string. Um, I'm going to open up a record here so you can see this is really what the unique IDs look like. So this is essentially what you're doing. When you set up your data types, you're creating tables. And when you set up the fields, you're essentially creating the column headers. 
And then you do have to define what type of format those fields are going to be. So Bubble understands how to work with them going forward. 